So my name is Michelle Moran, and I'm the founder and director of this place we call the Cedric Center, which is a counseling center that uh, specializes in helping people who have a stressful relationship with food. By that, we mean people who eat more than they're hungry for, can't stop eating once they start, find it, um, find it feel compelled to restrict food, um, maybe even full-blown eating disorders like anorexia or bulimia or orthorexia or binge eating disorder, people who are just frustrated with their body image and weight. So my own experience is that of a binge eater and exercise bulimic is what they call me now as the terminology develops. Uh, and my own recovery experience in my 20s led me to want to do this work to help others because it was so difficult to find help and uh, so difficult to find someone who actually knew that it really wasn't about the food, at least not exclusively. What I'm here to talk with you about today is uh, in, in my belief and in my philosophy and what we do with great success at the Cedric Center is we help people to understand that food does have an impact. The kinds of food you eat, of course, uh, will either be more or less life enhancing for you. But there's also a very important factor, which is why you're choosing the foods that you're choosing, uh, both from a physical perspective and a psychological perspective. So we're going to cover all of that. So the food emotion bond, the point is they, they intertwine these pieces. The psychological, emotional, and physical aspects of our being feed into each other. You can't just focus on one as diets do. So certain flu foods influence the release of certain hormones, which naturally then influence our moods. And then our moods will trigger us to want certain foods. So I want to talk to you about some of our favorite food groups and why it is you're drawn to them at certain times. And then we're going to go into looking at more of the psychological underpinnings of the issue around food. The more dopamine we have, the happier we are. It's that simple. Um, and if we are not feeling happy, it's usually because there's a decrease in dopamine levels. Yes. Did you know that dairy, <laughs> dairy contains opiates? And, and even more in the digestive process? So that when we're eating dairy, when we actually ingest it, and then at later, as our body is digesting it, we get this lovely release of these pleasure chemicals that trigger the dopamine release in the body and make us feel happy and make us feel good. So naturally, it's a tough one to kick if there are other aspects of our lives that aren't feeling so good and we don't know how to fix those. We're naturally going to be drawn to certain of these foods to trigger that release nice and quick. But what happens with the sugar is that we get these millions of molecules that rush the bloodstream, triggering that intense opiate reaction. But then also, there's an insulin response. And as I just mentioned with meat, what happens with the high insulin spike in the body is, a, is an even greater dopamine release. So that's why we're so drawn to the processed carbohydrates and sugars. I mean, they taste good. So there's a natural pleasure trigger because they taste good. But there's also a chemical reaction happening in the body that's making us truly feel a drive for them or an addiction for them. Only 9% of women never diet. And over 90% of all disordered eating is triggered by dieting. Also, uh, dieting for weight loss is often associated with weight gain, ironically because we trigger a cycle of binge eating when we next get around food after restricting. Another statistic, adolescent girls who diet are 324% greater risk for obesity, which is because of what we were saying earlier about the increased incidence of binge eating. And then we also get tuned out to the natural rhythms of hunger and fullness in our body, and it's hard to feel, um, hard to get back into the rhythm of eating when you're hungry and stopping when you're full after dieting acceptance and belongingness and fulfillment in, in all the key areas of our life in order to have that dopamine flowing properly and in order for us to truly feel happy and therefore to not need these other substances to lean on to get us through the day. We definitely want to come back to Maslow's hierarchy in our mind and start to ask ourselves, okay, is it, is it the physiological needs for, for healthy food, water, rest? Is it physical safety and security? Is it a sense of acceptance and belongingness or connectedness with other people? Is it self-esteem? Is it that self-actualization where I really feel like I'm fulfilling my true purpose? What is it that's not feeling like it's the way I want it to be in my life right now? And the more we start to focus on that angle, the less we're going to stay stuck focusing on that, in that loop of the past and the future and feeling stuck, and the less we're going to need that food to cope.
Often the problems that we have are quite easily remedied, or in fact, as we saw in the past future loop, old stuff that we could really truly let go of if we just saw how it was impacting us. So really, food is not the problem. It's the interplay between the kinds of foods you're eating and what's triggering you to want them in the first place, which truly has this basis in the chemistry in our brain. But often the chemistry is the way it is because of the thoughts that we're having and the life experiences that have triggered them. So our focus at the Sedu Center is helping to put all that together for you so you can start to have some simple tools to understand why am I doing this in the first place, and most importantly, how do I stop? If you are using food to cope in any of the ways I described, there's always a reason. It's got nothing to do with you being lazy, stupid, or lacking willpower, not caring about yourself. It's not about that. There's some underlying thing that's happening that's triggering you. It could be that past future loop. It could be your chemistry is a little off because maybe you haven't eaten well that day, or you're stressed, or you're feeling down about something in your life. There's always a reason, and beating yourself up for what you're doing with food is not going to help. It's not going to help you to feel safe, to stay present, and figure out what's going on. It's not going to give you any self-esteem to start to tackle any problems.